Welcome back, my tacticians, and you see it? That's right, we all see it now. It's time we have a new online competition. Woohoo! Oh my lord, it's been a while since I did one of these videos, but you know what? Our first online competition of Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon is finally up, and it's going to be the Johto and Alola Online Cup. So, Kanto and Alola. We had Kanto and Alola for Sun and Moon. I believe it was one of our first ones. But, now it's going to be Johto and Alola. That's right. So, Generation 2 and Generation 7 merge together to form an awesome combination of battles and epicness of epic proportions of pure awesomeness. You know what? Let's just get into the details. So, Obviously, this is going to be a battle between, you know, the Johto region and the Kan- uh, not the Kanto region, but the Alola region. And Pokemon found in both the Alola region and the Johto region are going to be allowed, natural. Now, the signups are going to begin starting, uh, December th or 7th, as it says here. And all qualified participants of this cup will receive 50 battle points. So... For those of you who, you know, might be a little scant on your battle points, this is a good chance to, you know, get some experience, some competitive experience, get some battle points, earn some stuff. You don't have to, you know, compete in all of your matches to qualify. I believe you only need to complete one battle to qualify, so you just do one battle, whether you win or lose, congratulations, you got your 50 battle points now. Let's talk about the Pokemon that are going to be allowed as well as the battle format. So, the battle format is going to be a double, so that's pretty much my specialty! Woohoo! So, yay me! As for everyone else, well, if you can, you know, battle in a doubles format, you're, you are good to go, alright? It's not that hard to, you know, get learn how to do a double battles. It's not that hard to learn some team strategy. I did some team strategy guides, etc. So if you want to, you can, you know, check some of my playlists. But in any case, Pokemon that are going to be allowed in are Pokemon restricted to only those found in Johto and the Alola Pokedexes. So... What does that mean for us? Well, if it's found in Alola, you can use it. And if it's found in Johto, you can use it. Now, Pokemon that are not going to be allowed. Mewtwo, Ho-Oh, Lugia, Zygarde, Cosmo, Cosmoan, Solgaleo, Lunala, Necrozma, and all the mythical Pokemon related to Generation 2, 1, I believe, yeah, 2 and 1, and, of course, Generation, I believe, 7, so... If it's, fa if it's a mythical Pokemon found in the Alola region or in the Johto region, it's not allowed. So, the goodbye those of you who were planning to bring in all bring in an all legendary 16. But you know what? You can still rely on some of those legendaries, such as Suicune. You can bring in Suicune. But speaking of Pokemon, you know, there are going to be some interesting competitors for this one. And one of them is going to be Salamence. Now, I'm predicting... Salamence is going to be a major player in this competition. It's simply too powerful to not pass up, to not at least look over, at least for your team. It's got the, you know, it's got the Intimidate ability, which is probably the most common ability it, that all Salamence run. You rarely, rarely see a Moxie set up on Salamence, and that is because... Most people tend to run the Mega Salamence, so if you give the Salamence the, you know, Salamence site, it will have the, it will Mega Evolve, and it will have the Aerial 8 ability, and for those who don't know, the Aerial 8 ability will turn all normal type moves into flying type moves, which basically means if you're running, like, say, the standard special attacker, you have the Hyper Voice uh, Aerial 8, which will, you know, hit both the opponent Pokemon, and it will have the flying type Nick flying type being added to that to that or move instead of you know normal type so it will be flying type instead and that can really catch a lot of teams and you know people off guard because they're not prepared for something like that and of course it has a really powerful physical attack so it can run you know it can go for an adamant nature or a jolly nature and go for aerial late return or e or aerial late double double edge or something along those lines so those are going to be some interesting Pokemon you're going to want to watch out for. So just one of them is going to be Salamence. It has a huge diverse move. Scrolling back down, I don't know why I scrolled it, scroll back up. 
even just naturally, it has some really, really powerful moves it has has access to. You know, it has access to the Dragon Claw. It has, it has access to, I believe it has Cruncher. Yes, it has access to that. It has access to the Zen Headbutt. It has access to Double Edge right there, like I said. Or it can run the, you know, the Return, as I was saying before. It even access to some elemental moves, such as Fire Fang, Thunder Fang. It has a lot of its bases covered. So... While I was saying saying about how Salamence can be, you know, one of the staples of teams because of the Intimidate, another common Pokemon you might see is Milotic. I mean, I myself might might end up running the Milotic as well. And for the simple nature of the fact that it uh, has access to the competitive ability. And for those who don't know, if a stat is ever reduced, such as the physical one because of Intimidate, then competitive will raise the special attack stat by two stages. So. This is basically the anti-intimidate meta. Milotic is probably is going to be one of those counters to s Pokemon such as Salamence, such as Gyarados. Don't be surprised if you see Milotic with an adrenaline speed. It has a really decent set of stats. You know, it has a good speed stat. Not the greatest, but you know, it's enough to get by. And it has that special attack. A hundred special attack may not, you know, be that impressive to some people, but. You put that on top of a competitive ability which is triggered, that plus two special attack suddenly looks very disgusting. And as far as moves and abilities go, well, there's nothing like a competitive natured hydro pump or ice beam or blizzard to just ruin a dragon's day. So it has access to a lot of firepower. It has access to dragon pulse. It has access to a lot of things. It even has access to laser focus of all things. Oh my lord, Milotic. I'm I'm predicting Milotic to as well be a very dangerous Pokemon. Another one that I'm also predicting is going to be the Meg is going to be Meg Meg Mega Metagross. Oh my goodness. For those who don't know, Metagross has access to the to the clear body for those who also don't know, that means your Pokemon will not have your stat reduced. So this is also another counter to, you know, Intimidators. If they try to Intimidate you turn one, you can just, you can just lead with your Metagross and, you know, take that Intimidate because you're not going to be Intimidated. And then you can come back with a Mega Evolved Metagross and just slam them for a Meteor Smash or a Bullet Punch, whatever you want. So that is what you can do. That is what you can, you know, work with if you want to go for the Mega Metagross. It can be a really powerful staple. So don't be don't be afraid to look at Metagross for your team. Another one that's going to be very common, if I might say so myself, Clefairy. That's right, Clefairy, people. If you're wondering why, Friend Guard. You know, Eviolite, Friend Guard, Calm Natured, Clefairy, Max Defenses, with the follow me and the friend guard ability perfect for those who want to you know misdirect their opponent misdirect their opponent into you know not dealing damage to the target they want and basically just being a nuisance on the team and keeping your team alive clefairy can do that for those who don't know friend guard i believe reduces you know damage done to you to your team by the opponent by about 50% give or take I'm not entirely sure right off the top of my head but it does reduce the damage a lot so and it also counts Clefairy as well so Evil Light plus that friend guard ability makes it very tanky very difficult to knock out unless you're rock and steel type moves such as a me Mega Metagross with Bullet Punch or Meteor Mash just saying so, finally, and the reason why I'm why I'm saying Clefairy can be, you know, helpful to you, I will do theme teams as well, and you'll find out because Volcarona is allowed in this competition. That's right. I believe you can find Volcarona somewhere in the Alola region. I believe you can find it, like, on Akala Island. But you can find Volcarona, or at least Larvesta. Yeah, I believe you can find Larvesta. And... Who has not seen a Quiver Dance set up on the Volcarona? It's one of the most powerful moves for Volcarona. And if it can get that Volcar that move set up safely, if it can if it's partnered up with the Clefairy, so that then it can get that, you know, Quiver Dance set up. And of course if it rocks the Focus Sash, all the better, and Volcarona will be able to sweep from there, deal damage, and just wreck everyone's day. So 
there you go, people. Just my suggestions, such some of my, you know, my possibilities for what I think will be some of the most common Pokemon that I'll be you you'll see in this competition. As I said before, this competition will begin, or at least uh, the sign up period will begin the seventh of December, and the competition date actually will be Friday, sept December fifteenth. So expect some expect shenanigans. So be prepared, my tacticians. Get ready because the first online competition is about to begin. I am Imperator Davius, your Fedora Warren Reshiram. I will see you all next time. Bye bye!